This is Marty Howe and Jack Sugden of the Web Conferencing Store presenting WebEx. So what we see here is the WebEx Meeting Manager Control Panel Interface. And when participants log in, and they usually receive an email with uh, a link that they can open up in any of their browsers, and they also receive information on uh, the teleconferencing numbers, whether it's a toll-free or it could be a toll number, and their access code, etc. They can also uh, come in on the audio portion with VoIP or Voice over Internet as an option. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at all the different window panes here and menu items and get an understanding of this interface. So this is the default interface. We'll look uh, at the participant window first. So um, the host has control over assigning the roles of each participant, either as a presenter, a host, or a closed captionist. We'll cover that in a sec. There can only be one host. Uh, and one presenter at a time. And the host can also mute the audio portion of any participant, or he can invite via email or instant messaging uh, on the fly, either using a local email program, such as Outlook, where he has the advantage of sending out a list. Uh, or he could use WebEx, where he could enter emails separated by a comma and invite people on the fly. Uh, especially good in ad hoc meetings. Um, we also have the option to remind by, by email or instant messaging. And then they'll get all the, uh, the, the information automatically, the link and the um, teleconferencing information. In the chat box here, it's pretty obvious. You enter your chat and you can send to all participants or the host, the presenter, the host and the presenter, or one particular uh, participant. And each participant has this option of chat. Um, let's take a look at the closed caption uh, options. Now, the host has an option of assigning the role of closed captionist to uh, any of the participants. And then that participant, during the meeting, can take notes and every once in a while uh, publish it to all the participants. And it just broadcasts out and it's updated. So um, the it's, it's very useful in, in, in kind of having like a stenographer that uh, takes uh, notes of the main points in the meeting, which will be good for people coming in late or as an archive. Let's look at the menu items up. No, let's actually look at video first before we go to the menu items. So uh, we have the video uh, window there, and we can have up to four videos at once. We'll bring in two uh, when Jack comes in, when, when I invite Jack, and we can go full screen, we can bring in a floating window if we want. So there's polling. We can uh, uh, open up the polling question interface. We can do a new one, multiple choice or short answer, and then uh, open the poll. We can save it. We can actually open up one that we've created ahead of time, which is probably the best way to go. And then we open up the poll. We give people options to to uh, answer the question. and when when different uh, participants answer the question, then the results come up here. And then the host can actually, uh, if he wishes, uh, publish the results to the rest of the participants. So that is a very useful polling feature. So let's go back to the menu options here. Uh, we can op open different kind of documents that will come up in the interface here, such as PowerPoint, uh, uh, JPEGs, uh, PDFs, even flash videos and mp3s. Uh, we can share or we can actually transfer documents here. Uh, transfer files, we select a file on our computer's hard drive, we share the file and it'll go to every participant in the meeting. Now the difference there is that once they've received that document then they will be able to have the option to download it to their hard drive and then open it and it'll be opened up in the uh, appropriate application associated with that document. For example, if it's a Word file, they'll la it'll launch their own Word application and they can make view or make whatever discretionary changes they want. So that's a little bit different than coming into the share. Well, it's actually a lot different than coming into the share option here where the document is in the WebEx meeting interface and then uh, uh, the host can give 
a particular participant the option of either controlling uh, that document or he can grant privileges to one of the other participants to take control of that application or document. So that's very powerful and all the changes will be seen in this common environment, this stage. So we're going to demonstrate that with Jack in just a sec. I want to show you the web or the share web content which we can enter an URL here and then uh, once we click OK that is sent to every participant in the meeting and what happens is their web uh, browsers launch that page and then every participant has the option to uh, view that web page at their own discretion. Now that's a little bit different than sharing a web browser. Now when I choose that the web browser actually comes up in this environment and then I can make it full screen and it's like this so all the participants will be able to see what I'm doing so I have more control over that uh, and of course that certainly has its advantages um, because then I can direct the flow of the meeting at my own discretion. Um, so let's go back to the meeting here. We have the view options here such as uh, thumbnails and uh, full screen etc. Here's the thumbnails from the PowerPoint presentation. We'll just turn that off for now. We have the communication features. Anybody who joined the meeting late we can have them join the teleconference if we have that as an option instead of VoIP. Uh, for the participants, we can mute on entry or invite or assign privileges of uh, each participant, either for all of them or particular uh, participants. Their uh, document, share, uh, printing, annotation, viewing, thumbnails, uh, all those privileges can be assigned here and controlled by the host. We can also start a recording uh, and record the whole meeting which could be very useful for people who come in late or having an archive of the meeting or for any training that you want. It's Everything is recorded, the audio and every uh, screen move that we do here just as you're watching and so that's very useful to have those uh, options for recording. We have help menus here from WebEx Help Manager etc. Um, so that is all very useful. So let's get Jack in on the act here so we see that Jack Sugden has joined us here and I've made Jack a host just by right clicking changing his role to presenter there. So Jack could you tell us about the share features, the application sharing, desktop, whiteboard and PowerPoint control? Yeah, okay Marty. So uh, yeah, first we're going to start with PowerPoint. You'll see a PowerPoint slide right here in front of you, uh, webconferencestore.com. Marty is giving me the controls to push that. I can be a presenter now, and I can push the PowerPoint slide and make the, uh, the points that we want to make uh, during the meeting. I can use uh, an annotation tool here to highlight the points that I'm making and keep everybody's attention focused on what we're talking about. Uh, there's also highlighters, there's text tools, there's uh, you can see I used the highlighter there, there's boxes, you can whatever, all the annotation tools are right there. You can use that on any document, not just PowerPoint. Uh, any document you put up here, uh, you can use these annotation tools. In fact, uh, of course, these are used in, in a whiteboard, and I created a little a little graphic here uh, before the meeting. Uh, you can you can have anybody come in if they're uh, making a little presentation, want to use the whiteboard, it's always available to pop up at any time. Also, I want to show you the, uh, a very powerful feature called uh, application sharing. Uh, and I'm going to pull up a document right from my desktop, share it with everybody. And you'll see in a second here. So this is a Word doc I was working on today, and I might want help uh, in uh, finalizing the last edits and maybe change some of the graphics around, upload new graphics. And I can give the controls over to anybody in our meeting to come in and work with me on it. And uh, it's a great collaboration tool. So these are some of the main features of uh, the WebEx control panel. And I'd like to turn it back over to Marty. Thanks, Jack. And I'd like to remind everybody at webconferencingstore.com, we do a comparison of WebEx with 10 other top 10 web conferencing solutions. And we also have uh, feature comparisons and pricing models and international requirements and other resources. We also have a tool called uh, the Web Conferencing Decision Tree which will help guide you through a process of deciding which 
web conferencing solution is most suitable for your needs. We'll see you at the web conferencing store.